Okay, so I wanted to address our work with fairy tales um, today by kind of zeroing in on one particular activity uh, that you need to do in this whole process, uh, and that's taking a look at symbols and archetypes and how you guys can do a, a, a better job of working with the uh, the individual topics that go with the fairy tale that are part of this assignment. So we're in a way, we're just going to explode this thing out. Um, you guys are going to be working through an example yourself with a fairy tale, tale called um, The Singing Bone. Uh, and then you're going to take the example and then apply what we do with this activity into the own your own fairy tale that you're studying. Okay, So if we take a look at um, the document, and again, this is the exercise that we've been working on and we'll continue to work on for over the next probably two weeks. Um, it's a multi-layered analysis of fairy tales. So I think the problem most of you are facing is you, you understand the story, but you're really not going in with the depth that I would like you to have to show good thinking um, and good analysis of your, of your fairy tale. You're able to kind of give a surface analysis, but you're not really putting enough uh, work into the thinking part of it. So I want you to take a look at what I've given you as a template is very simple and I think the simplicity might be what's confusing you. All right, first of all, all you have are two slides that deal with symbols and archetypes. Archetypes. The first slide is some kind of identification of items, objects, people, settings, colors, creatures, which could be symbolic or archetypal. And so it almost suggests that you make some kind of list here. And then the second is what our close reading uncovered about symbols and their possible meanings in fairy tales. And that's really all you have to go on. So I want to give you more information to help you make uh, a better analysis, a stronger analysis. So where it's going to begin is um, really with a close reading or rereading of your fairy tale. And this is something I would not have one individual in your group do. I would say everybody's responsible for doing this activity. Um, and as you read, you're paying close attention to things that pop out of that pop out of you. They may not seem significant at the time, but I want you to note them, things like colors, the setting, uh, the time of day, um, the season of the year, uh, the clothing maybe that's being worn, any specific animals that are named, creatures that are identified, uh, specific objects that our characters might be carrying, they might be given, uh, they might encounter, um, particular characters, types that they encounter, uh, numbers that are used, like three brothers, twelve huntsmen, um, and then the different situations that they fight, face. And what we're trying to do is create a catalog of possibilities and these possibilities might be things within the fairy tale that are serving a symbolic purpose or an archetypal purpose and so the next step is going to be to look at your list and begin researching okay so i noticed that my heroine is wearing a green outfit what can i do with that and he he has a, a cape uh, a green outfit and he carries with him a long staff okay so what can I find out about that? So I'm going to take my research, uh, and I'm going to give you some of this. Some of it you might have to look up, too. And you're going to begin the process of trying to identify what these different objects, colors, numbers, what they might represent uh, in a classic framework, in a literary study framework. So, for example, I'm going to give you a big, long five- or six-page list of different situation archetypes and it's going to you're going to take a little time to kind of read through and identify like wow that's exactly what's happening in my story or i see here a ritual that's taking place um, and then read through the description and then ask yourself some questions about your own fairy tale how is it being uh, played out within my own fairy tale and then you can look and there are other things within this list from colors to uh, objects animals, nature, you name it, there's a, a host of things here. Now, I've also provided you with other resources, including like significance of different colors, what emotions are behind them. Uh, so pay attention in your reading to things, uh, light, dark imagery, um, what color are the trees, what color is, do they make a point to talk about um, you know, the girl with no hands has is given silver hands. Well, what does silver suggest to you? Um, is there anything we can make of that? 
So what we're going to do is practice with our story that we started on Friday called The Singing Bone. And what I want you to do um, is this will be working together with your small group of three people. Uh, I want you to go back into The Singing Bone. It's short enough. I want you to reread it. But this time I want you to note, okay? So as you're reading, you're going to be looking for specific items, people, animals, creatures, colors, all those things that we talked about. Pay attention to those. Um, anything that you think might have some kind of symbolic or archetypal significance. It may or it may not. That's the purpose of the analysis. Um, look at the handouts that you've been provided in Canvas or have been passed out to you in class. Use those as well as you can. And then what I want you to do is I want you to uh, read your singing bone, and you'll see I'll give you an electronic link to it, which is going to be necessary. Um, and then the first step you're going to do is going to be um, to highlight the text. So when you go into the singing bone text, I want you to copy all of it, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to do um, kind of a word search, all right? And the way that works is there are two programs I want you to look at. One of them is called Ed Wordle, okay? So when you go into uh, Ed Wordle, what you do is you see that it does, um, it does these neat little uh, clouds, word clouds. And what it does is it, it analyzes the text that's inputted. It identifies the often repeated terms, uh, significant terms that appear inside the text. And then it creates a graphic to illustrate those terms. And so you get all kinds of colorful results. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is use either the Ed Wordle program, or if you prefer, if that's not working for you, you can use a program called Word It Out. Both of them work basically the same way. You can change colors, you can change shapes, you can change fonts, all that kind of stuff. But you're going to input your text, okay, into the box, click generate, and then you'll get a word, uh, word cloud that appears from it. I want you to copy that. Use your screen capture or screen uh, shot, okay, to capture that. And you're going to save that JPEG file into your folder because we're going to use it. Uh, as we work through this exercise. And you can see, um, this is one I've done, okay, uh, for the story. And, you know, it's pretty simple looking, but you can see certain words start to jump out. These words might help you and give you a clue about symbolic symbols and archetypes that might be at work. So things like spears, brothers, woods, okay, um, Older kings, bridges, beasts, a dwarf, okay, a heart, a shepherd, a boar. These are all things that might have symbolic significance. So we're going to identify them or help identify them by using the wordle and then by using your own close reading. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll create a document, okay, title it Singing Bone. And then when we transfer this to your own fairy tale, it will be the title of your fairy tale. Uh, you're going to drop that jpeg file okay right there and then you're going to create a table okay and your table is going to have um, five columns all right the number of rows will vary the number of rows will depend on how many items you identify as possibly symbols possibly archetypes at work um, and so you'll have a big long table set up and if you look at the, the table a little more closely uh, the first column will be made of, of the objects and symbols uh, that you identify as possibilities. And then what I want you to look at, and this is why I don't want you to do it by yourself, this is going to take the whole team, you need to talk about what is the purpose. So my character finds a sword in the middle of the woods, okay? What is the possibility, what is that sword being used for? To battle a dragon, the sword is used to protect, the sword is used to, to kill the enemy. What's the purpose of it? What's its function in there? Uh, when is it used? Where does it appear? Uh, how often does it appear? Okay, or how often is it mentioned? Um, and then you'll record that information here. That's what doing a close reading and close analysis involves. A little bit of work and a little bit of time and effort. Then your second one would be to do your research and look up what is the traditional interpretation of a sword, okay, in a mythic tale. Um, what do I get, you know, what does the color green traditionally represent when we do a literary analysis? So this is the usual expectation, and then what you want to lay that against in your uh, 
fourth column would be how does what's happening in the story, how does this literal interpretation match with what I'm interpreting within my story? Does it fit? Does it make sense? Do I think it's being used exactly as prescribed? Or is there some new significant use? And then lastly, but not least, would be to take a look at what you would say is the strength or the power of this symbol. Do you think it's it's just you know coincidence that it's blue? Um, it doesn't have a deep impact. It certainly doesn't seem relevant in the story. Uh, this is where you're drawing your conclusions. Is this symbol, is this archetype serving a purpose within the overall story? And if so, can I identify or draw a conclusion about what that purpose is and what the message it might be reinforcing? So again, you're going to finalize this. This is going to take us at least two days to do. Um, you're going to finalize this for just our study of the singing bone. Okay, so this is going to force you to go a little bit deeper, and I think that's the methodology I want you to try to follow with the other steps on this part two. It's something that was lacking to a great to de- a great de- extent on part one, but I think it can be improved upon. We can get better at this.